just when you thought it was over. Here I am coming to you with part 5. Well, actually, this is part 4, or at least part of part 4. When I was making part 4, it was running a little bit longer than I expected it to run in getting it done. And so, to be able to get it done within a reasonable time frame, I had to leave part of it off. So, I'm here now giving you that missing part as part 5. In this little epilogue, I'm just going to go over a couple of SD40-2s that have meant the most to me over the last 30 years or so. Ironically, they're all Canadian Pacific SD40-2s, which is kind of fitting when you think about it because I started off this series talking about the Canadian Pacific SD40-2s and the fact that they had so many on their system. So we start this little epilogue off in 2008 in Albany, New York. I was delivering just down the street from where I caught this southbound D&H train waiting to come into Kenwood Yard. I was delivering to U-Haul as a matter of fact you know those little tarp if you've ever rented a U-Haul truck those tarps that they uh, rent to you to cover your furniture and stuff like that well that's what I was delivering I picked them up in Laredo Texas and I was delivering them to uh, to U-Haul there in Albany that was the second part of my drop. The first part of my drop was another U-Haul in Newburgh, New York. But anyway, getting along here, that day in Albany, New York, the lead unit was the 5677, and the second unit was the 5690. Now, the 567 I ran into three different times over the course of about uh, 10 to 15, 12 years. The first time was in Buttonwood Yard back around 2003 when it was sitting waiting to push up a coal train to Albany, New York as a helper set or as a helper locomotive. The second time I caught it was here in Albany, New York in 2008 and the third time I would catch it would be in 2015 here in Scranton as it led train 259 into Binghamton, New York. Not only would this be the last time that I saw the 5677, but it would also be the last time that I caught a solid um, SD40-2 lash up on a CP rail train. The second unit, the 5690, I had caught again, I had caught in 2004, and I caught it in Saratoga Springs, New York when it was still painted for the St. Lawrence and Hudson. Now someone had asked me in one of the comments because I had made a statement about the St. Lawrence and Hudson being ill-fated when it came to CP and somebody asked me why, what I was talking about. I'll make a video about that. I'm not going to get into it in this video but the bottom line is the St. Lawrence and Hudson was a Canadian Pacific experiment of the 1990s and more likely than not if you're a local rail fan or if you're a rail fan of CP or the DNH and you can remember back to, in the 1990s you'll know the story of it. If you don't know that story you will know the story because I'll be doing a video on it in a not too distant future. But at any rate, though, I first caught up with the 5690 in Saratoga Springs Yard in New York in 2004. And this was the second time that I caught up to it here in 2008 in Albany, New York. And I would catch up to it many more times over the course of 2015 as I was waiting for the takeover of NS of the Sunbury Line DNH of the Sunbury Subdivision at that time. The last unit, number 5721, I caught in 2003, again at Buttonwood. This time it was on an outlawed train waiting for a recrew. The original crew that outlawed was kind enough to bring me on board, and I was able to get this picture of the engineer. And I'll tell you, you just, you just can't find a more classic looking engineer than that. Now, unfortunately, you can't tell because of the resolution of the photo, but, the, but take a look at his hat. Now all those little pins in his hats, those are all DNH and CP rail pins. But the one that's dead center, okay, that's a that's a DNH pin. So this was a DNH man to the core. And to be honest with you, he looks it. By the time the recruit showed up, I was able to get some shots of the exterior of the engine and getting them blasting off south heading toward Enola.
it would be another 12 years before I would see the 5721 again. When I did see it, it was no longer a CP rail engine and it was no longer red. This time it was a Lehigh Railway engine and it was now painted black. And while I've caught the CP slash Lehigh Railway 5721 several times since 2015, the real reward for me is just knowing that so many of the CP rail SD40-2s still survive somewhere in North America.